Next up, um, service jams have been, uh, for many, many people, the, their first encounter with the service design or the service design world. A lot of people working in non-design related uh, uh, contexts have um, been introduced to service design at these jams, working together with service designers and other people. And they've been organized for 10 years now. So that's an unbelievable uh, to hear. Uh, 10 years of service design history. And today here, yeah, you can't talk about service design without talking about Adam Lawrence and Marcus Edgar Hormus. And they are going to be teaching us about what they learned uh, in those 10 years of hosting jams. And I personally expect to learn a little bit about the history of the rubber chicken too. Um, looking forward to what you have learned in these last years. Marcus and Ed uh, and uh, Adam, uh, go ahead and take the stage. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Hi, Marcus. Hi. Hi, Adam. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm just here. Yeah, I'm just jumping in from uh, from another meeting. Basically, I'm, I'm hosting a workshop uh, all day, like innovation stuff and strategy. Uh, yeah, fun on a different channel. Teams, teams, teams. I even like saying the word teams. Yeah. You sound quite quiet to me. Is anybody else hearing Marcus quiet or is that my... No, it's it's you, it's you. So welcome uh, to our talk. Marcus will fix his sound settings. And uh, while he does that, just a little talk about what's going to happen today. We've got 20 minutes with you guys and I'm really happy to see many of you again for that. Um, by the way, if you've jammed before, just put that in the chat. Put that in the in the Brello chat, and uh, we will uh, just see where you've been. Okay, so I was checking my Facebook uh, yesterday. You know, Facebook. I still use that thing, and uh, I did find out that it's nine years yesterday that we had the first uh, on stage session at Service Design Network about the jam, and it's ten years this month since the. Service Design Global Conference in Berlin, where we tested the idea of the jam, walked around with a big flip chart and uh, people put stickers on it saying they wanted to join. The first city was Bogota, who put up for that. Then a few weeks later at Servdis, we launched it. So many people here, as it's been said, know what a jam is, but uh, maybe some people don't. So maybe a little bit very quickly, Marcus, for you, what is a jam? Well, do you, can, you, can you hear me now? Much better now, thank you. Much better, yeah, there we go. Um, all right, a jam is just like a music jam. It's people coming together with their, you know, with their instruments, different backgrounds, um, and going in there without an agenda, other than meeting other people, trying out new things, and building something together, which which happens in the moment. And so we do that. We transfer that kind of to the to the world of service design, um, as other people have done in, in their industries, saying, you know, let's come together. And some people, you know, bring their, their skill in visualizations, other their skill in problem solving, building things. And let's try to go through that service design process in a very limited amount of time and just sort of, you know, have fun doing it. At the same time, take the, uh, the interaction serious and the people serious. That's right. So um, it's an open event. Nobody makes any money from the Global Jams. And well, we try and follow this motto at the Jams of doing, not talking. And that's really hard through this thing, through this camera here, through the video screen and so on. I mean, honestly, you know, 10 years ago at the, at the conference, um, things were different. You know, we could leap about, we could do stuff, we could get your engagement through yeah. doing things like that. And I, 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 are you going to sing again? No, I'm Adam? not going to sing again. I, he, sing he, again. Okay. I haven't got a, I don't think Jamin could take it. It almost caused a heart attack last time and stopped the conference. And I'm, I'm older now. I'm a bit more cynical. You know, I've lost some of my dreams. I mean, nobody bought our agency. You know, thank you very much. Big four for that. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've been thinking about how we can handle this one, uh, how we can make this a jammy experience for you guys. And also maybe adopt that uh, motto of doing not talking a little bit so we'd like to acknowledge something we'd like to acknowledge the fact that you guys are consuming this conference in a very different way than you would normally consume conferences yeah um, you're probably half watching this half doing some emails you're probably um, 
maybe naked doing the vacuum cleaning. You probably got some cat videos on the other screen or you're taking care of your kids or you're cooking or so on. And we've got about half your attention right now. And that's okay, that's okay. And we'd actually like to reduce the amount of attention that you give us. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna change our virtual backgrounds and share with you guys a link. Um, I'll put it in the chat also in the Brello. And this is a link to a board, a bitdo link. It's bitdo SDGC jam in large letters or in small letters, whichever ones you want to use. And we invite you to click on that. And that will take you to a Google Doc. And on this Google Doc, there are a bunch of links to Miro boards. They're all the same. Yes, there's kind of a master board, but as it's a few hundred of us in the call, that might even slow down Miro. So go ahead and see if you, um, if it gets a bit slow, just switch to a different mirror. So you're working on, if you like, copies of the same board. And we'd like to invite you to explore. What's on the board, Marcus? Well, on the board is basically some, some material that we collected over the years. You will find all the challenges we put out to the teams around the world from the very start. So with our theme videos, there is, there is um, academic papers that people wrote about the jam and the methodology of jamming and what it does to, to you know, your culture or the innovation ecosystem around um, the region that you're jamming in. Um, all kinds of resources, really. And it's designed to be a, a path you can wander around if you like to, whether you're new to jamming or not new to jamming. Um, it will take you in different places. You can also use the frames function on Myro if you know that to click around fast or just follow the arrows. If you're new to Myro, there's even a Myro explanation board on there for you as well. By the way, we're not sponsored by Myro. We just like them. Anybody else having trouble getting to the doc? It should be work for most people. Let us know in the chat and we will fix that for you. But this is the official notice from us. We've got 15 minutes more with you guys and we do not expect your full attention. Yeah, listening from now on is optional. Yeah, we're going to be uh, talking about some things that we think are interesting right now in the world of jamming, in the world of accelerated formats, in the world of sprints and hacks and all these things like this. Hmm, it should be open to everybody that jam, but I'll just change the setting. Okay, anybody else who is not oh, your sky shield protection. What I'll do is I'll put one of the Miro boards directly into the link on Brello. There we go, that's the first board. If it gets too busy in there, I will drop in some other boards as well. If your company is blocking it, then I'm afraid you'll be forced to just to listen to us guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so go ahead and play with that. Please do make sure you come back uh, in time for the end of this one because our friends from KLM are coming back and they will be able to tell us more stuff about their project as well. So Marcus, uh, for those of us, those who are still listening now, yeah, um, let's talk about what's changed in jamming in the last 10 years. We've run, I think, 27 global jams in that time. Yeah, So about 10,000, 20,000 people, we can't be sure, have experienced service design through the first time through jamming, but it has got different. What's changed? Well, I, I think the... Um... We, we got clearer as a, as a community what jamming can do and what it cannot do. At the beginning was a lot of enthusiasm. We, we, we pushed, um, you know, we tried to squeeze as much as possible in, into a weekend. And what I saw in, you know, we, we started with a, with a focus on prototyping, you know, built something in, in 48 hours. Uh, what happened is a shift to a way more balanced view between research activities at the jam and and prototyping so it's i think almost equally important now it's uh, you know so people learn about research at jams they go out they do interviews they they got a first red line into that stuff yeah I mean, that's one shift that I saw. And, yes. and I'm not even touching the, the, the stuff that happened the last six months. To the exactly, chat. exactly. So before that, yeah. you know, we, we pushed doing not talking was the first message. The second message was prototypes. The third, the third message was uh, get out of your seat, get out on the streets and really encourage people to iterate during the jam and get their prototypes in front of people. Because we think a jam context is a really important place for people to experience not just the tools and the mindsets of service design, but one quick iteration. So we really believe in not starting with an idea and not ending with a presentation, but starting with a question and ending with a testing uh, of a prototype as you're moving forward to bring up new questions already. Yeah. 
What else has been going on? Well, we've been jamming in all kinds of places. China's really happened in the last year or so. We had 40 jams lined up in China uh, for the last event. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, we've seen other countries come and go, I think, as the maturity of service design has evolved in those countries. But what about um, jamming inside organizations as well? We've been doing some, some of that and other people too, yeah. not just us, of course. Yeah, I, th I think this this start at the beginning. It it was a fun weekend, but people took that format um, back to their organizations and say, "How can we use that one?" And what we've seen, um, and and we tr what we also tried ourselves is to um, use that format as a vehicle um, in culture change, mm. in changing the mindset of people as an intervention, and it. it it often is tied to something quite serious uh, within an organization. For example, um, taking research uh, that, you know, a lot of market research uh, units or design researchers, they, they struggle to get their points across to the rest of their organization. So it's like, th this is an insight. Um, so we're quite successful of taking these insights and actually packaging them into a jam and then have people play with it. And suddenly, it stuck because they could see the potential um, that were in these kind of research uh, results that that you would offer people. And not a people, pe uh, not a lot of people were literate in in reading research. Um, they need an activity level like a jam to make sense of what this could mean, and then they understand. And so um, we've done that. But there's there were other things, you know, it's like. Um, uh, bringing people from partners or organizations and the core of an organization together as we did with BSF. Adam. Yeah, we, so um, we work down again for a company called BASF, a very large chemical organization, and they have lots and lots of partners around the world as well. And they had a big innovation festival, 150 years of the organization, and they thought we could spend money on fireworks and champagne, or we could run a one and a half year long innovation festival and consciously try out different forms of innovation um, over this one and a half year testing period all around the world with different audiences and see which ones we want to take on into our core um, if you like, a uh, tool set of innovation formats. And one of them was jamming, not through us, actually, through a, a great Italian company called ECSI. We came in through the back door because one of our clients at the time, Adidas, was a partner of BASF. So we ended up working together on these jams. And that was really exciting. Seeing how they can bring in partners, but also seeing how they can cause a splash in an organization. And this is a really important thing, I think. Um, holding a jam, even if the outputs of that jam are often not so useful as the outcomes, and we can talk for hours and hours about the difference between outputs and outcomes, causing, holding a jam causes a splash in an organization. I've done jams with 700, 800 people, 30, 40 facilitators in large organizations where everybody gets to try service design for the first time, um, and everybody gets to meet the freaks, meet people like them. Um, um, having a different kind of communication that's not entirely word-based because let's face it, verbal communication does certainly give advantages to certain types of people. And there are other people who can build something or show something whose insights are just as valuable. You get great pictures, you get great press about it, and then people see the project as theirs. And that's a big difference if three or 400 people say, I was part of this project. That, that is true. The, the thing is, what it also creates, if you, you know, we, we had this jam with a, with a um, supplier within the energy space. And what they did, they invited their key accounts and uh, did a jam together about the future within their industry. Um, and a jam creates little teams and these teams work on something. But the, the, these teams are actually a safe space for the people in on this at this table to talk about anything, to get to know each other, to see how they how, about people react, and there's no project pressure in this moment. So basically, they just can be themselves and get to know each other, even though you're talking about subjects that are quite relevant. But there is no pressure to implement tomorrow, and I think this is one of the key features because it then creates a space where you don't have to do anything, but you get inspired, and then like. 10 uh, a week later you call the guys oh, we had the side subject we didn't you know follow it up on the at uh, the jam but can we do something about this 
This is um, one of the learnings also from some of the research that's happened around the jam. Yeah. So a jam is not quite the same as a sprint or a hack. It has the same sort of format, if you like, but those things are much more get it done focused, where a jam is a much more try things out. Yeah. Look at the problem space as well as the solution space. End up with a shitty prototype, which is being tested rather than an implementable line of code or hack or whatever. So um, that, of course, appeals to different people and it will have a different kind of impact in the organization. One of the things that we've found out, for example, has been often been said is after the jam, amazing things happen. After the jam, people are skilled up, they're connected up, and they start to take what they've learned at the jam. It may be in their first contact, for example, with a new legal change or a new leadership group or a new vision in the organization, that that will take us further faster after the jam because we've lined up the right people and found the, the right people. It's a great recruiting uh, area as well. Marcus, we've got six minutes left, so let's just switch a bit towards the end. Um, yeah. Obviously, this year we had big, big plans for the jam. We plan to re reintroduce the Global Sustainability Jam. Um, we also had the biggest ever Global Service Jam lined up, uh, which should have been in the first week of March. And remember that uh, some things happened in much of the world around the start of this year, and it hit Europe especially in the early part of March. So that changed our plans. And we had to change the format of jams and go online, which is a thing we were quite dogmatic about not doing before the jam. So what happened, Marcus? Well, basically, um, we shifted this whole thing to August and that gave people a time to think. So we had many discussions, you know, a lot of the core DNA of the of the, um, the jam was, as Adam said, put people in the room, but we had a few people trying initial formats even in march i say we take the jam online and see what we can do how can we create that energy that playfulness at the same time the seriousness in terms of you know how, what we do uh, without taking ourselves too serious um online and you know the dubai jam did a did uh, a great kind of first experiment that, that we also podcasted about so if you want to listen to that so and, and hear about their experiences it is possible to bring fun and playfulness to the to the online space uh, we, we touched base with a fantastic community um, of online facilitators um, and there is now what i see uh I think a push in where we can go with the gem online um, that I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't think it was possible. So people get dancing together online. You know? It's like we, having fun, building relationships. What we figured out is, uh, as possibly many of you have, is that there is a certain intimacy if you create that space in a right way that is even more intimate then you would have if you have 100 people in a room or 20 people in a room because yes, you can't find that private space. But if you're in a breakout room in Zoom, you have that one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation. And of course, it ties into with all the activities that you do. You have to get up. You have, got, have to get kind of physical in in the room in front of this, this well, get, get physical in terms of dancing or, or doing exercises, um, playing around with the windows, um, building, you know, using objects that you have, you know. Stuff, you know, bring, bring in toys. Um, so have some fun with that stuff. And uh, that is what we see. And it engages people, not in the same way we have uh, offline, in a different way, in a different quality, which I wouldn't say, you know, you should compare. It has mm. its own quality. It's and different. we will certainly keep stuff from there yeah now if you've not jammed before this may all sound very fluffy and very playful but we have used jams to approach very serious subjects um like for example uh, privacy um or sustainability issues and so on uh, and you can read about some of those things on the Myra board or watch movies about them but it's important to say that in the jam community it's about taking the subject seriously and not taking yourself too seriously julika asked what's the task for the Myra board other than swarming around use it whatever you want to use it for yeah there's all kind of information there you can ignore it if you like yeah um so 
Let's talk about what's coming up because we're seeing at the moment a, a real explosion in these short formats, yeah, especially the design sprint. Being careful here, the word sprint gets used in very different ways in design. I'm talking about the sort of Google sprint type design sprint is super. My super busy. My, my Facebook um, stream is full of people advertising to me that I can do a, I can kind of free book and then I can be a workshopper or whatever it's called uh, in, in a couple of hours. And then I can change, I can challenge every problem that my organization has yeah um which would be great so i'm going to send off for that book really soon uh but what is what is happening with all these things is a jam better than a hack better than a sprint better than a camp better than whatever these things are i, I believe we, we still have to explore that because uh, what we found is you know there is a limit in how short you can make something to be still meaningful mm. Um, meaningful for the, the problem. And there, there might be an echo in a one hour. Is there a one hour jam? I don't believe so. Because you, you can't get properly doing. You, you, you can hardly set your brain to the topic. And so we need to discuss these things. So what is the, the, the usefulness of a jam within a project? Because that's the point. A, a sprint, a jam hack are really great tools to have at your disposal when you put together a project. But they, so they don't are not the, the project. project itself. Yeah, they don't replace the project. You know, there is ni still 90% of the project happening in, outside all these kind of formats. And we need to acknowledge that. And we need to learn how we can apply them and actually possibly also find a, a, a certain honesty in what they can do and what they can't. So we've got one minute left and we'd like to use that to send an invitation to you guys. Thanks for what's going on on the Myra boards. We're going to keep them open so you can drop in there anytime and take a look at them. We'll put them in information. If you hope for a presentation with slides, we put them in the Myra board anyway. All the, boil it, all the bullet points you want are in there somewhere as well. Uh, but we'd like to make one more invitation to you. I'm just changing my background one more time. Um, so we are setting up a prototype online open space type conference thing, thing. You know, yeah. coming up um well the first one's in a few weeks actually so we're just sort of getting it started now because that's how we work it's called compressed or compressed it's pronounced like compressed only faster um, you can go to compressed.org and you'll find out about that there's going to be an invitation to all those jammers, hackers, sprinters, everybody using punctuated or short formats in their work to come and have a conversation about that. Marcus, our time's up. Thanks very much for, for hanging out with me today. Thanks for jumping in at the last Hopefully, hopefully you're not, not watching us. <laughs> <laughs> Just listening while you're hoovering, getting some exactly, work done in exactly. the kitchen. That was fantastic. So thanks to everyone who has been yep. helping us out with this one. And we'll head back to our moderators. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Adam and Marcus. Uh, please join our next Q&A uh, session.